you may be familiar with the first flights with Eagle, which is our beginner series. So we decided that we would do an advanced series, try to cover certain features in more detail, cover little known features, tricks, things that you can do to, to, to on more complex boards, things like that. Uh, focus on, on UOPs at some point, maybe a little bit of a UOP development course. So that's the goal of this series, basically to, to turn Eagle users into power users and those that are power users to maybe pick up something that they weren't aware of before. Okay, if you guys can confirm that you can hear me, um, just send me something to the chat or to the Q&A just to confirm that you guys can hear me. Okay, I want to make sure that you guys are able to hear me before we continue. There we go. Ben can hear me. You're going around. Okay, cool. So let's go ahead and start. I want to talk about the auto router in depth. I don't think we've ever done a video as deep as I'm going to go into here. But if at any point you guys have questions, feel free to, to ask, okay? So I'm going to share my screen. You guys should be able to see it. Please confirm if you can't. And we're going to be working with this board again that I've used in other webinars. Okay, can you guys see the screen? Please confirm if you can. You'll be able to see my screen. Confirm, okay. Good, okay, so we got some confirmation. So here's what we're going to do. This, as you, can see, you guys can see, this is all completely routed. I'm actually going to rip it all up. That way we can exercise the auto router. So here's a completely ripped up board. I'm going to do a rat's nest to clean up. Okay, we can see the polygons. Everything's looking pretty good there. Okay. So. What we're going to do now is we're going to go ahead and start the outer router. Okay, it's not necessary to have the polygons on for this, um, but it doesn't hurt either. So I'm going to go ahead and click on outer router. Okay, and we're going to discuss several of the options that are here, especially since many of them change from version six over. So I have a pro version, so I have 16 layers possible. Any layer that is not currently in use is going to be set to NA. Okay, by default, you notice that the layers that are in use, top and bottom, are set to auto. Now, this is a new option relative to previous versions of Eagle. In previous versions of Eagle, you only had these preferred directions, but now you have auto, which is new. Auto basically tells Eagle that it can play with the direction as it sees fit for each routing variant. And we're going to discuss in a second what the routing variants are. Okay, now, what, what are the preferred directions for? Basically, in, in, the, in the early days of auto routers, it was discovered that in digital boards, one of the best you know, algorithms for getting things routed was to, on the top layer, for example, go left to right, and on the bottom layer, go up to down, have all the traces basically be perpendicular to each other. Um, didn't matter if, if, the, if the top was up, down, and the bottom was up, right? But the idea was that on deferring layers, the traces would be perpendicular to each other. Okay, nowadays it's not a strict requirement. Auto routers can do more sophisticated things. But there are occasions, especially in digital logic boards, where that can come in handy since any signals that are perpendicular to each other don't have inductive coupling. They're, they're out of phase with each other. Or it's minimized. Let me not say they don't have, but it's greatly minimized if they're perfectly perpendicular to each other. Okay, so that's what setting a direction allows you to do. You can see this is left to right, this is up down. You can also do 45s from the bottom left to the upper right, and from the bottom right to the upper left, so on and so forth. An asterisk basically means you don't care. Let it do whatever direction it's going to do. For our purposes, we're going to leave it on auto. And when we get to the cost factor tabs, we'll see that this preferred, where this preferred direction comes into play. So the effort parameter here basically dictates how many routing variants Eagle is going to create. We set it to low, you might get you know two to five. 
that it's a medium, you may get somewhere in the high single digits to 10, 11. If you set it to high, you can sometimes get 20 plus. Um, basically, each one is going to be subtly different. They're each tweaked in slightly different ways in order to try to improve the routing result. Okay. For our purposes, we're going to leave it on low. Here we have auto grid. Again, this basically lets Eagle play with the routing grid and make it different for each of the variants. If we don't want that variation, we can just manually enter a routing grid that all of the variants will have. But again, to, to, to best leverage this ability to do multiple variants at once and we want to get the, the most variety between them, we're going to let Eagle modify each of them, even though manually we can play with them. Variant with top router. Now this, if you're familiar with Eagle, and even if you're not, has created some confusion, okay? One of the improvements in Eagle version 7 was that along with our old auto router algorithm, we added in this new one, which was the top router. Basically, this is a topological routing algorithm in which using sophisticated math, Eagle basically calculates optimum paths for each of the routes, and it kind of creates a sketch of those paths. That sketch is then passed on to our old algorithm to do the actual work of routing. Now, even though the top router in general is a, looks a little bit more natural, it's aesthetically a little bit nicer, computationally it is much more intensive than our old algorithm. So sometimes users get the false impression that maybe Eagle has frozen or something like that. Um, but that's not the case. So we'll see that now when we go into actually our first pass route. You're going to see how the variant with the top router behaves relative to the variants that don't have it. When you have this checked, you create one variant that uses the top router. The other variants just use the old algorithm by itself. And you're going to notice very visibly the speed difference. Maximum number of running threads. Okay. This entry here deals with really how many cores your computer has. In my case, I have a quad-core machine. Every core can run two threads. So I have a maximum number of running threads of eight. So at any given point in time, I can have eight variants routing together at the exact same time. So let's say we had the effort set to high, and we had 16 uh, routing variants created just for the sake of argument. On my machine, eight of them would run at any point in time. So as soon as it finished one of them, then it would immediately pick up another one. But at any given point in time, you would have eight running. And I can lower that number. If you have a single core machine, usually the maximum is going to be two. Um, but I have a fairly strong machine. So I'll leave this on high so you guys can see how, how they kind of interact. I'm going to say continue. Okay, as you can see in this particular board, it ended up creating 22 variants. 22 different variations. The first one has a top router. And like I mentioned, because I can do eight threads at any point in time, you guys are going to see that at any given moment, eight of these are going to be running. So I'm going to go ahead and start, and we're going to see what happens. So you can see several of them were running. A lot of these are getting done. And the top router, nothing has happened, or at least that's how it appears that nothing has happened. Okay, And this is where sometimes you just get the impression that Eagle has frozen because they don't see anything. But really, if you just wait a little bit, you'll eventually see a progress bar here. But if you don't want to wait and you just want to make sure everything is working, if you click on any of the other routing variants, you'll see that you get results. And all of them were able to run perfectly on their own. You can see the top router is running. You may see a flicker. That was it. It ran. It ran perfectly. Everything is done. Okay. So if we look, each of these is going to be different. They're each a different routing uh, routing result. So I'm going to click through them slowly. You're going to be able to see that they're each different. You guys can see they're all different. 
And we can inspect these to see which one we consider best and which one we want to keep. And the way you do that is by clicking Evaluate. Evaluate is going to let you kind of zoom in and look around and see what's here, see uh, how the routing was. You can even make some subtle changes, even though I, I kind of discourage doing that because um, it's computationally more intensive. Once we're done reviewing and maybe we decide we want to check out another one, you'll see there's this auto router icon here, right? So if we left click on that, you'll see that it'll tell you there is data available from the recent auto router job. If you want to continue to evaluate, changes in the current drawing will be lost. Okay, so if you made any changes in the variant, you have to and you want to keep them, you have to stick with this routing variant. Since we didn't make any changes, we can go to one of the other ones by clicking evaluate and just pick a different one. And let's say this one, okay? You can say evaluate again. We see that it fills in. Let's just say for, for giggles we want to keep this one. And we go over here again, and we click end job. Okay, and that's it, and we can rats nest again and check all stuff. Now obviously this is not favorable because we ended up breaking our star ground here. So this is no bueno, not a good, uh, not a good end result that we want to keep. But the idea behind that first pass was just to show you kind of how this works in the new version 7. Now we can go into more detail. So I'm going to rip everything up again. Okay. Any questions so far? I think I see a question. Let me see. Okay, no questions yet. Nothing so far, so we are good. Okay. So now let's take a moment and go into more depth. So we're going to click on the auto router again. We've already covered our variants. Okay. We hit continue. Now before, now I have it on low, so it's only creating four this time, and that's fine. Before we hit start, which is what we did before, now we can inspect these. And we can start playing with the cost factors. So we're going to click here, and you're going to see that it expands, and we have many, many more options here, many more options. You can see how the routing grid is set up, see the directions. Okay, now we're going to go to the next variant, and I want you to keep an eye on the preferred directions and the routing grid. You guys will notice there's a change in the preferred directions here. The routing grid changed as well relative to the first variant. We go to the second variant, we see that the directions stay the same, but now we have a finer routing grid. Next variant, again, directions stay the, the same, but a finer routing grid. And as we create more variants, you'll notice that there'll be more variation between routing grid and top and bottom. Basically, no two variants are going to be identical. So let me go back to further illustrate that. I'll cancel this. I'll go auto router again. I'm not going to continue. You always have the option to continue. I'm not. I'm going to start fresh. Effort high. Hit continue. Don't know why it's set up to four now. Let me rip this up again. Try medium. Hit continue. Oh, wait. Auto. And auto. Now we have the 22 variants again. Okay. So again, if we start looking at these, we're going to start noticing variations. Now we have differences in direction, routing grid, difference in direction, same routing grid. Difference is here in direction again, same routing grid. Other combinations, other combination. different routing grid. So you can see none of these variants are exactly identical in their setup by default because Eagle makes sure that, that that's the case when you select uh, a different effort level. However, we can make them vary even more. We can make other adjustments. So what you so that you guys can understand, let's, let's focus our efforts on this, this one. That way we just have these tabs to worry about. The buses tab is the first routing pass. Okay? This is the first routing pass. And the idea behind this pass is that it does everything it can 
to stick to the preferred direction. That's why preferred directions are important. And this first pass that the auto router does is going to try to get everything routed in the preferred direction. That's dictated by the various uh, cost factors here. Okay, once this pass goes through, then Eagle says, okay, forget that. I'm just going to try to get everything to connect properly. Okay? So it's going to do that. It routes as much as it can, try to get everything done. Once it finishes, then we start entering the optimize runs. Now, if you notice, we have four different optimize runs, and they're all different cost factors. The idea behind the optimize runs is to minimize the number of vias. That's their goal. So after Eagle routes everything, the optimized runs basically try to clean up, try to minimize the number of vias that were put into the design. And that will become very apparent by looking at the cost factor for via. You can see vias are bad, 99 points to use a via. And the cost factors are really what helps you control Eagle, Eagle's auto router. You can't force it to do much. There, there's, there are very few things you can you know, have a hard guarantee on, but you can very much guide it to do what you want it to do. So as you can see here in the optimized runs, the VIA cost factors are set very high. So Eagle incurs a high penalty if it uses a VIA. So if you guys are familiar at all with, uh, with minimum and maximum problems, Basically, the way the auto router works and tries to, to get everything routed is that it tries to minimize the cost function of a given route. So every time Eagle uses a VIA, it's adding 99 to that cost, fat, cost function. So as you can see, it behooves or it favors avoiding VIAs because there are so many other things it can do that have lower cost. That's kind of the mentality between the, uh, within the auto router algorithm. It's just minimizing a cost function. And again, we can see that in the others here. So this is essentially what every routing variant has. And in the optimized runs, the costs are always set the same. In the bus and route tabs, for the most part, they're set to be the same. Where you see a lot of variation is in the, in the directions. However, since you have access to each of the routing variants, you can change each, each of these to suit your taste or to try to achieve a certain effect. So let's go ahead and start covering some of these cost factors, at least the, the most important ones. For your future reference, so that you guys know, the route tab has the most features, so we're going to cover this one in detail. The, the rest are pretty much identical. So that you guys know, all of this information is in the manual section 7.6, how the cost factors influence the routing process. Okay. Each factor, is, as you can see here, can take a value from 0 to 99, but the full range isn't useful. The manual actually goes to the effort of giving you a useful range for the different cost factors. Anything higher, for example, in the case of the layer cost, anything higher basically doesn't make much of a difference. You'll see recommendations. You'll see what each one does. So for future reference, you guys know you can go here, section 7.6, and you can find out what each of these cost factors does and what each controls. Some of these, you've got to be very careful when changing them because you can actually uh, create a lot of damage and make the auto router unusable. So do take care in, in how you adjust them. But in general, it's, it's pretty much an open play, playground. So let's discuss some of these. We go here. The first group is easiest to explain, and these are the layer costs. Basically, the higher the cost, the more Eagle avoids the layer. Again, it's trying to minimize a cost, faction, uh, a cost function. So because I have a two-layer board, and obviously I've disabled all the others, so these other cost factors don't make much of a difference. But as you can see, there's no penalty incurred by using the top layer versus the bottom layer. They're both equally valid. So Eagle will tend to use them pretty much the same amount. It all depends on how easy it is to make the connection. So let's say, for example, that we want to favor routing on the bottom. What could we do? Really simple. Set top to 20. Or if you just want to go all out, set it to 99. 
Okay. Like I mentioned before, this doesn't guarantee you won't get traces on the top. Because remember that the other cost factors are also in play. This does not guarantee that you won't get traces on the top. However, the auto router will very strongly favor routing on the bottom, as you can see. So that's how these work. So as you can see here, if we look at the VIA value, its cost is 8. So every time he uses a VIA, eight points get added to the cost function. As we cost function, as we saw in the optimized runs, VIAs are very highly discouraged by setting this to 99. Okay, non-preferred direction. Again, we can very simply go back. If you notice, a low value will allow the tracks to be routed against the preferred direction, while a high value forces them into the preferred direction. If you set it to 9, you guarantee that you're only going in, in preferred directions. So here, as you can see, there is a guarantee. If non-preferred direction is set to 99, you're basically enforcing the old algorithm, where top uh, left to right, bottom up and down, or vice versa. Okay. But here's a usable range, 0 to 10. And if we see here, we have a kind of a middle value for the route. It's okay to go either way, whereas here, it's not a, uh, it's not enforcing the preferred direction as much. Okay, how you can make changes? Again, we go here. Low value means many bends are allowed within a track. High value produces virtually straight. Go back. Now, if we look at these two, ortho step and diagonal step, these are very tricky. Basically, what these control is whether Eagle will route at an angle, like go out of 45, or whether it will go left, right, up, down. Okay, so these two factors very much interact with each other, and they are a little dangerous to mess with. So be careful when, when tampering with these. I've never messed with them much myself. I've never had the need to really play with them. Okay, but keep that in mind. Again, it'll cover the manual covers in more detail how they work, and it even specifies these should be altered with great care. Now, the extended step is kind of an interesting uh, parameter, and there's some very powerful things you can do with it. Okay, this controls 45 degree bends to a preferred direction. So if you have a low value, basically you allow uh, 45 degree bends, whereas a high value will not. So you can actually specify with the extended step parameter, the maximum number of extended steps. If you look over here, this, this parameter here, this parameter and this one interact with each other. Uh-oh, what happened? Post that up. Okay, so we're recording again. I want to share my screen with you guys. Let me know if you guys can see it. Okay. 